Praise be Jesus and Mary. I tell you, brothers, the time is running out. So St. Paul says in the reading today, the time is running out. Most of us here are over the hill as the expression goes, including myself. It's a good expression, a good image, because it's so different when you're still climbing that hill than when you already reach the top and then you go over. If you haven't gotten there yet, it's just something that you just have to believe that it's very different. When you're, when you're climbing still, the destination, the end, is not yet visible. It's on the other side of the hill, right? We know it's there, but it's not on our minds so much. We only know that it's going to be there. We're still climbing against gravity. Time even seems to go slower. It seems like we have so much more control over our life, maybe, because there's so much ahead, etc. But then you reach the top, then you go over the top, and then you see, wow, there is a destination. I am a mortal. And there it is. It's in front of my eyes. And now there's a lot more behind me than in front of me. And now I'm not fighting gravity. Actually, gravity is speeding me up, so to speak. Time is going by faster and faster and faster. And there's nothing I can do to slow down. I don't know if you relate to this experience. I'm kind of making it dramatic. And then, wow, we realize every little deviation can have such a terrible consequence. And of course, there's a, a feeling of peace, but we have to surrender ourselves to God all the more when we're over the hill. At least, I would say so. At least that's how I would describe the experience. We have to utterly surrender ourselves and trust, because the speed is just picking up. The path is so narrow. And all we can do is just trust in our Lord and Our Lady. And St. Maximilian, so now to illustrate this with an anecdote, uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe in 1937, when he was already over the hill, 43, and through many graces that he received, he knew probably, probably in some detail how he would die, that he would die a martyr, he knew, but even humanly speaking, World War II was clearly on the horizon. He knew that tribulations were coming for himself and for his friars, so he shared something with the friars and in his community to prepare them for that. The time is running out, be ready. And he shared with them a grace that he had received. He called them all together and one of the brothers who was there to hear this story, I actually met, I didn't realize like, what, a, what a grace I was receiving when I was still a postulant in the summer of 2007, this brother Leon Romanowski, one of the friars who was there to hear the story from St. Maximilian then told it to me and to some other uh, Franciscans of the Immaculate. Basically, the story is the following. St. Maximilian calls these brothers and tells them, brothers, I just want to share something with you. I have such joy and peace in my soul that I cannot describe it. So I just wanted to tell you, I love the Immaculate, and she will give you that joy and that peace. And that was nothing new. The friars were always hearing that from St. Maximilian. So they were like, okay, no, we know you have more to tell us. What is it, Father Maximilian? Tell us more. And he says, do you really want to know? Well, of course, you know, you call this together. We know you have more to tell us. So he tells them, okay, I have this joy, I have this peace, because Our Lady has given me the certainty of heaven. Love her, serve her with your whole heart, and you too will have the same joy and same peace. Okay, is that enough now? He says, well, no, obviously there's something more, they say, the brothers. Tell us more, tell us everything. Well, what is this grace? How did you receive it? And St. Maximilian finally gives the last detail. Brothers, it was in Japan that I received this grace, that Our Lady assured me of heaven. And now, even though I'm going through trials and tribulations and tests of faith and all of the above that all human beings will go through until the end of their life, there's this joy and peace and certainty in my soul that Our Lady will lead me 
to the destination safely. Therefore, brothers, don't try to do extraordinary things. Just love Our Lady. Do her will every single day. And trust and surrender yourself to her and she will lead you safely home. And that was it. He said, don't ask me anymore. That's all I'm going to tell you. Just live what I told you. That's what it means when we say that devotion to Our Lady is a, a sign of predestination. It doesn't mean that we've already reached our goal. It's still ahead of us. It's approaching fast. So Our Lady is for us a sign of predestination because she indicates to us that we're going in the right direction. If we surrender ourselves to her, let her guide us. So let's do what St. Maximilian said. I mean, he received a very unique grace, that confirmation in grace, that, 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 um, that extraordinary mystical grace that few saints receive. But he wanted to share that joy with others and tell them, do the will of Our Lady. Love her and you too will have that peace in your soul. Brothers, time is running out. So surrender yourselves to Our Lady and let her lead you home. Praised be Jesus and Mary.